Hello everybody, I'm Dan RVD3000, also known as Dan2010 on Xbox Live, and this is uh, the second top five moments. Uh, speaking of which, there'll be a, a little link here on my hand right now, uh, to somewhere, to my uh, previous video, somewhere in on the screen right now and so I take you to the previous top five worst WWE WrestleMania moments but what for every bad moment in WWE history there's been doesn't mean that it's the end of the world that means it gets counted by great moments in fact there are so many great moments in WWE history great matches great plots like storylines story and there are so many to think of and I couldn't choose but what I'm gonna just do right now a shout out goes to WrestleMania 6 Hogan vs Warrior Ran uh, WrestleMania 3 Randy Savage vs Steamboat WrestleMania 3 Andre the Giant vs Hulk Hogan WrestleMania 17 the entire show and WrestleMania 19, I don't believe, and Rock vs. Austin Part 3 as well. I'm gonna put in there. There are so many great matches slash moments. It's unbelievable. Even last year, there was some actually some decent moments. Uh, apart from the you know top five, you know there was Sting vs. Uh, but versus Triple H, but. That's in the previous countdown, just somewhere on the screen right now. But I hope you enjoy my top five greatest moments in WWE WrestleMania history. It was very hard to choose my top five, but you might as well enjoy the rest of the, the rest of this video as you know it for so a wrestling fan as myself. Choosing five of the greatest moments of all time, I can just say all of them, but that will be cheating. So, I'm going to stop blabbing on and on and on, and I'm going to get to the countdown. We shall see you after the countdown. Bye bye, see you then. Number five. Five. My number five is... WrestleMania 30 was well that one of the best WrestleManias of all time. I mean, you had yeah, the, you had the matches in between. They had the ending of the streak. We'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> and we had Daniel. We had loads of great matches in between. Like I think the Shield were involved in a match and beat the New Age Outlaws and Kane and. Just like a, just like that, but yeah, but, but they were the best moment of the night. Is the underdog story of Daniel Bryan overcoming the odds over not one, not two, but three former members of Evolution in the where the stipulations couldn't be even higher. The story went. Uh, Daniel Bryan needed to beat Triple H in honor to be involved in the main event of WrestleMania 30 and challenge for the World Heavyweight Championship. WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Where it, this was the back when the WWE Championship and the World Heavyweight Championship were both held at the same time before it got back to being part as the single championship. But I'm going on about that. Anyway, Daniel Bryan beats Triple H at the beginning of the night, the first match of the night, and after, you know, on the previous Raw being beaten up and had bad ribs and all, he still manages to have that underdog likeness and ends up by beating Triple H. And then, and he goes on to make Batista he tap out after a long, grueling triple threat match 
where I will show you a picture now of one of the greatest moves ever. The RK Batista environment on RKO, reverse, reverse RKO, I like to call it, threw down off the table, and after all that, he overcomes the odds and makes Batista tap out. There might be a picture there, there might not be, but yeah, uh, it's, uh, well, no, wait, there it is. So yeah, um, and then he wins the World Heavyweight and WWE Championship. And my god, everyone was going, yes, 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 yes. You probably won't think, Daniel, why isn't this your number one? Well, that's because it's an underdog story, and I've seen that, being the age that I am, I've seen many underdog stories in WWE history. So, why it, that's why it's only number five. And back then, I didn't really like Daniel Bryan as much as I do now, and I know. <laughs> I'm not that big of a Daniel Bryan fan, considering that we both had share the same name. But that's my number five spot. Going on to the next one. Number four. Four. My number four is exactly what it's what it says on the tip. It was the first ever televised ladder match at WrestleMania. To make that clear, at WrestleMania. And it was for not one, but two Intercontinental Championships. Now the story goes that Shawn Michaels was the official WWE Intercontinental Champion. But then had to give it up due to injury, I think. But I will correct. Correct me in the comment section below, people. Uh, then, Reigns Ramon won a tournament, I think, to become the Intercontinental Champion. Then, Shawn Michaels comes back says, Hey, listen, I'm the true Intercontinental Champion. Building up to WrestleMania, Reigns Ramon says, this, Well, no, I am the true Intercontinental Champion. Then the president of the WWE, uh, quote unquote, WWF, um, makes a huge match, and it will be a for the first time ever, two championships will be on the line, and Razor will defend his Intercontinental Championship, and Shawn Michaels will defend his Intercontinental Championship in a ladder match, and. What a ladder match it was, filled with really good spots, and it was at WrestleMania 10, and you know, where, of course, one of the worst er, moments happened at the beginning of the show, you know, the, oh, hey, 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 you said you can come along, we ruined this. Yep. Go back to where you came from, we won't mention that, uh, oh, your Kazuna match at the beginning. <laughs> And yes, the, again, Bret Hart, I uh, props to you, you did become WWE Champion at the end of the night, but the, it kind of ended really bad and strange, so... But the best match of the night, in my opinion, the best moment of the night was when Razor climbed that ladder and grabbed the, both the championships and became the undisputed, under intercontinental champion. Hey Chico, take a look at the new, the crowned Intercontinental Champion. So WWE Hall of Famer Razor Ramon winning the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania 10 was for me the fourth best moment in WWE WrestleMania history. But what was number three you ask? Well, you're about to find out. Number three. Three. The, let's set the scene. It's WrestleMania 18. And the second from last match of the night gets the crowd pumped as we get to see the Icon versus Icon match. The Rock in one corner, Hollywood Hulk Hogan in the other. 
NWO versus WWE, yeah, or whatever. It was great. One of the greatest matches of all time. Of all time! And you can guarantee they booed the hell out of The Rock and cheered on Hulk Hogan, even though The Rock was the face and Hulk Hogan was the heel. And at the end of it all, we had a winner being the most um, the electrifying man in all of entertainment, the people's champ, The Rock. Beat Hulk Hogan clean. One, two, three. But apart from that, the respect between the two at the end of that match was one of the most best moments in WWE history. Seeing The Rock, the great one of the Attitude Era, shaking hands with Hulk Hogan at the end of that match was like... Brilliant. The entire match was great, filled with really good spots. I mean, my memory ain't as good as it once was, but I know that it was a great match. And that's all I can say about that is that it was the electricity, no pun intended, in the air. And by the time it got to the main event, it was like the crowd were exhausted. They might as well have gone home. It was so goddamn nice. It was so goddamn good. You could cut the tension down with a butter knife. But that's only the third best moment in WWE WrestleMania history. I think I can top that one. Uh, this, let's add on another. Let's see. Oh, I don't know. This was WrestleMania 18. Another 12, just, well, I should say, another 11 WrestleMania later, that's the hint for number 2. Number 2! Two. Two. Picture the scene, it's the 2014 Money in the Bank, with some of the greatest names in the actual contest. And the winner of that Money in the Bank, no other than Seth freaking Rollins. After betraying the Shield and dumping the Shield and becoming the authority's top number one dog, and with Kane, you know, being in that match as well, making sure that Seth Rollins won the match, who would have thought that he would have done, oh, and done the most incredible thing in wrestling history? let alone WrestleMania history, later on in 2015, during April. But then we go to Royal Rumble 2014. We have... We have the two remaining competitors left in the Royal Rumble. One was Rusev, and two was Roman Reigns. But still lit, but all Roman Reigns goes to head to win the Royal Rumble by while being booed. Even the Roy's own cousin couldn't save him from that. So, what happens? He goes to WrestleMania and he goes to face the Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship. A match that no one certainly didn't want to see happen. I made a predictions video on this, and I even made a review of it. I didn't. What I thought, what I saw happen at WrestleMania 31, I didn't expect to ha see happen. And oh my God, it happened! It finally done it. Seth Rollins near the end of the match. Brock Lesnar's down. Roman Reigns is down. And then you hear dun, 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 and here comes Seth Rollins. He gives the money in the bank briefcase to the referee. The referee gives it to the timekeeper, and the timekeeper tells and says it is that Seth Rollins 
is cashing in the money in the bank. And my god, the crowd is going bananas. The crowd is going absolutely wild. One coach stop to, to Brock Lesnar. Roman Reigns is stern. You know, he Brock, I mean, Brock Lesnar gets up, reverses the coach stop into an F5. He's about to get F5. But then spare, spare to Brock Lesnar, it's, uh, and then uh, he throws Roman Reigns out the out the way and pins Brock. And actually, no, he after spearing Brock Lesnar, Brock, what does um, Seth Rollins do after making it into a triple threat match? He pins Brock Lesnar. No, not Brock Lesnar. I'm so excited. Roman Reigns, I beg your pardon. One, two, three. The new WWE Champion, Seth freaking Rollins. So yes, my number two best moment is when Seth Rollins cashes in the money in the bank to become the WWE Champion. Great booking, Vince. Thanks for listening to us for a change. And speaking of Brock Lesnar, uh huh, number one, wink wink. Number one! One. The Undertaker. One of the best wrestlers in WWE history. Makes his debut in Survivor Series. Then at WrestleMania 7. He defeats Jimmy Superfly Snooker. Builds a huge streak non stop. Uh, and then he gets victory over victory over people like King Kong Bundy, Kane three times, Triple H three times, Ric Flair, I think, um, uh, Albert, freaking. Uh, I hate beat it. Two men in a handicap match. He got as the American badass. He freaking beat Shawn Michaels twice. Randy Orton, Mark Henry, you name it, John Gonzalez. But you name it. He beat them all at WrestleMania. And the last person he beat at WrestleMania was CM Punk. But it doesn't matter about that. So it comes around to WrestleMania. Uh, 30, the one of the biggest stages of them all, the granddaddy of the lot, and who's is better and worthy to face Brock Lesnar, but to face on the take I'm getting ahead of myself at WrestleMania is the no other than the beast incarnate, Brock Lesnar. So the scene is set. WrestleMania 30 comes around. We see. Daniel Bryan advanced into the, the main event, but that's not it is the main event. I mean, we, that was earlier on in the, the countdown. I told you it was going to come back to this moment. Halfway through, mid, near the beginning of the match, Undertaker gets himself concussed, but he carries on the match anyway. And then uh, he takes a couple of German suplexes and Soup, that probably was the debut of Suplex City, but, not, but he actually called it that later on. But I'd like to say he probably he invented it at WrestleMania 3. Undertaker takes not one, not two, but three out of fives. The third one hits. The referee hands goes down for a one count. The referee and hand goes down for a two count. We all think I'm gonna take this gonna kick out, but then the referee and hand goes down for a three count. And everyone in the arena's shocked. Michael Cole says the streak is over. Everyone is shocked. I had the same face as well as this guy. <laughs> but seriously, I couldn't believe it. This was back before the uh, WWE Network days. 
and I forgot to record it on my Sky Boss box and the only thing it was and I needed to watch it on a stream and I couldn't help but see the headline and it kind of ruined it for me but I still needed to see it to believe it. I couldn't believe that the Antec stream was broken. So it's tw it became 21 and 1 at WrestleMania. So there you go. My no number one best WrestleMania moment, in my opinion, and most other people's opinion, they no doubt was when Brock Lesnar became the one in 21 and 1 at WrestleMania 30. And there you have it! That's my top 5 greatest moments in WrestleMania history. I have actually come to a conclusion that I hope you enjoyed watching both of those countdowns and I want you to like fill me in in the comment section below. What are your greatest moments in history and the uh, WrestleMania history? What did you agree with my list? Do you think you can do any better? Then go ahead and post your comments and make your videos. And feel free to share, like this video and even subscribe. It'll probably be there on the screen somewhere, but you know. Um, yeah, I, uh, what are your top five worst moments uh, as well? Let me know in the comments section below about those as well. And um, that, just WrestleMania in itself is a showcase of the Immortals. The, the grandest daddy of them all. The biggest stage of them all. As of this recording, it's now two days before WrestleMania 32. And the main events predictions are coming soon. I promise you that. In fact, after this video has been uploaded, I will be editing and uploading that one for you. So I appreciate you spending five minutes to watch this video. And if, uh, until next time, I'm Darren RVD3 2000, also known as Darren 2010 on Xbox Live, and I'll still see you. Did you reach the end of this video and you thought it was all over? Well, I got some good news. Uh, subscribe will be somewhere on this uh, link as well as Respect the Beard if you want to watch more playlists like this one. Top more top fives. And, and there might even be a playlist of my predictions and reactions from that was mentioned in this video. Also, Feel free to click on any random playlist you like, like clicking on my face. Or be something for you to click somewhere on this video. But until next time, bye bye.